Welcome back to the Mech Deck Tech. Today we have a custom build for you featuring Adeliz the Cinder Wind as our commander. We're focused on slinging spells to power up all of our wizards to deal some massive damage to our opponents while we control the board. Before we dive on in, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button to ensure that you never miss an upload. Today's episode is dedicated to user Nate, a good friend from over on Twitch. If you have some time on our Ender really like kind of difficult games, I highly recommend checking them out. Nate, you rock. Let's dive on in. As I stated, our commander, as per request, is Adeliz the Cinder Wind, a 2 2 human wizard for 3 mana with flying and haste that is going to pump all of our wizards up for the turn each time we cast an instant or sorcery. We're looking to play a ton of wizards and reward ourselves for casting instant and sorcery spells, hoping to eventually storm off for a big finish. We'll divide the cards into a few different categories in terms of the rewards they're offering us, starting off with creature production. We only have 21 creatures in this deck, and that could leave us wide open to some serious crackback. Luckily, we have ways of generating a ton of token creatures to protect us. Starting off the list, we have Dika Fractal Theorist, who is going to create us an XX Fractal creature, where X is the mana value of the spells that we're slinging. She comes with the added benefit of being able to make one of our tokens unblockable at the cost of 4 mana, and could do this repeatedly. Puppet Stitcher follows her up, and creates us some 2-2 Decayed Zombies, and while they can't initially block, once we have enough tokens in the field, we can always transform this token man into a token factory, boosting the base power and toughness of our tokens to 3-3 at the cost of their abilities, meaning that not only could these zombies block, but they're a little stronger. Tauran Sky Summoner is up next and is rewarding us with 2-2 Flying Drakes for each instant and sorcery we cast. These evasive drakes should be able to slip past enemy lines and get in for some decent chip damage over time. While not as powerful as some of the other tokens that we're generating, the elementals from our young Pyromancer could hit the ground running faster than the others, thanks to the fact that he only costs 2 mana to cast. These elementals are definitely here to chump block all day and keep us safe, at least until we have enough to kind of truly cast a wide net. Last up in our token generating category, we have Shark Typhoon. This is going to create us XX Flying Sharks again based off the mana value of our spells. This one has the added benefit of triggering for all of our non-creature spells and not just the instant and sorceries that we're casting. With us slinging spells left and right, we need a way to replenish our hand and we have a suite of card draw abilities to do just that. Topping the list, we have Archmage Emeritus, who is going to let us draw a card each time we cast or copy an instant or sorcery, and we have plenty of ways of doing just that to get to in just a minute. This Archmage is going to consistently keep our hand full of spells to sling, and that's just the way we like it. Curiosity Crafter follows up the Archmage, and while we aren't drawing cards off slinging spells, we are getting it from punching our opponents with the army of tokens we've just created. We've already seen the five token generators in the deck that fuel this bird. And with the card draw we have, we're bound to have access to at least one of them. Galvanic Relay is card draw of a different flavor. It's going to let us exile the top card of our library and play them the following turn. With Storm tacked on, we can see ourselves drawing an extra three or four cards that we could easily play. Seagate Restoration is kind of expensive at seven, but doubles as a land if we get a little little mana shy. This powerful sorcery is going to let us draw cards equal to the number of cards we already have in hand, and gives us no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Not having to worry about playing as many spells as possible each turn to ensure that we're not discarding is great, and it allows us to kind of like pick and choose what we want to keep to build up for a powerful storm turn, which is a great way to end the game. Solve the Equation is the only tutor that we're playing, so I'm going to count it as if it were a card draw. Uh, but for 3 mana, we can grab any instant or sorcery we want, including some of our big finishers. If we find ways to copy this spell, and we do have a few ways of doing that, we can grab entire chains, entire combos rather, to really blast our opponents to smithereens. What blue deck would be complete without Brainstorm? We're drawing three cards, putting two back on top, letting ourselves order the top of our deck is a great way to control the flow of our spells. 
and could take some expensive cards that were in our hand already and put them back in the deck to be shuffled away. Solemnity Visions is another backup land with the ability to grab an instant or sorcery from the top six of our deck and put the rest in the bottom. This card works really well with Brainstorm to tuck some of those expensive cards away for later use. We're not done with backup lands just yet though, we have Valakut Awakening, which lets us tuck cards we can't or don't want to use right away in order to draw the same number of cards. We're digging through our deck looking for the right answers to keep our opponents in check until we can finish them off. Just two cards remain in our card draw section, with Rhystic Study allowing us to tax our opponents for casting spells, and when they refuse to pay that tax, we get to draw a card. This Commander All-Star was never not here. The last card in the section is actually in three sections total, but I'll just mention it this once. Sorcerer Class. This card is putting in the work. We're starting off by drawing two cards, discarding two cards. Card draw? Check. Then we're going to level it up, allowing all of our creatures, including many of those tokens, to tap for mana to cast our spells. Mana ramp? Check. We aren't done yet though. Finally, it'll start to deal damage to our opponents equal to the number of instant sorcerers we've already cast this turn. Damage? Check. We'll use the fact that this is a little bit of ramp built in as a nice little segue to move into our cost reduction. We'll start off with Jace's Sanctum, which will reduce the cost of our instant sorceries by one, and allow us some card selection when we cast them. We have 16 spells that can take advantage of this reduction in cost, and it'll help us run through the deck to find our key pieces without using tutors and tipping more into like the CEDH range. We have a few mana rocks, so we're going to go over them pretty quickly including Talisman of Creativity, Soul Ring, Is It Signet, Is It Locket, Is It Key Rune, and Arcane Signet. As far as other artifacts in this category go, we have Primal Amulet, which will quickly let us transform it into a Mana Rock, which we will use to uh, copy our instant and sorcery spells. Mind Splice Apparatus can be flashed out and pretty quickly reduce the cost of some of our most expensive spells down to discolored pips, making them much easier and more efficient to cast. Seething Song is a nice mana positive instant, gaining us plus two red mana to let us storm off a little quicker. Moving into creatures, we have Urbrass, which is going to ping an opponent and give us a refund of one red mana as we sling these spells, allowing us the momentum needed to continue to pack a punch. Once transformed into the great work, we'll get to wipe out most of someone's board, gain some treasures, and cast spells from our graveyard, which could be a nice big finishing turn for us. Stormkiln Artist is going to reward us with treasure for each spell we sling, including cast and copy. He also gets bigger for each of the artifacts we control, though that tends to be a little less relevant. Goblin Electromancer is just good old cost reduction, but we're here for it. Just like the Sanctum, we have 16 different targets that are going to kind of benefit from this being here. And the more spells that we cast per turn, the more powerful this effect reveals itself to be. Galazeth Prismari is up next and will create a treasure on ETB but more importantly it makes it so we don't have to sack our treasures to generate mana for instant sorcery spells. This is also going to turn all of our static ability artifacts into rocks as an added bonus. The last mana reducer we have is Baral Chief of Compliance, who is pulling double duty both as a mana reducer and card draw engine as we counter our opponent's spells. Let's keep this train moving with our damage dealing spells and abilities. Electrostatic Field starts us off and is going to ping each opponent for one every time we cast one of our instant or sorceries. As a 0-4 defender, they're going to also serve as early protection from crackback with a number of instant sorceries we could potentially cast in a single turn. This is going to go from a gentle ping to a full-on storm rather quickly. We of course have Gutter Snipe, who's a little squishier, but is dealing two damage to each opponent. He's not here to attack or block, but just to sit back and throw damage around like it's nobody's business. Thermo Alchemist can be tapped to ping each opponent for one, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we get to untap them. A mini electrostatic field, if you will. 
Brawl Storm Conduit is going to pass out damage on both cast and copy to a target opponent or planeswalker, and has the ability to copy one of our instant or sorceries per turn. We have a few more direct damage effects left, and Grape Shot is leading that pack. This card has the potential to really just end the game, depending on how many other spells we've already cast, especially with our ability to copy our spells. Last up is Sentinel Tower, which is going to deal 1 damage, plus 1 for each instant or sorcery we've already cast this turn to any target. Those numbers actually add up really quickly, and we could use them to either remove creatures if they're like kind of key pieces that our opponents need, or remove players once their life is low enough. Let's start copying. You know what? You love it. Thousand Year Storm. This effectively gives all of our cards Storm, and because it isn't using the Storm keyword to do so, this includes spells that already have Storm. Double Vision is going to let us copy the first instant or sorcerer we cast each turn, which includes the spells that we cast on other people's turns letting us double counter a spell for some added insurance, or possibly counter two spells at once. Arcane Bombardment is here, and it's going to get stronger each turn. We'll slowly build up an arsenal of spells that we're casting for free, and before you know it, we're storming off like crazy. Twinferno is here to let us copy one spell, but it itself could be copied, leading to some truly deadly potential. Storm King's Thunder lets us choose how many times we want to copy a single spell, and works wonders with Twinferno that we just touched on. Increasing Vengeance lets us copy a spell, and if we flash it back, we get to copy that spell twice. While Galvantic Iteration is here to copy a spell, and is also able to be flashed back, though with no additional benefits for flashing it. On a Deluge is going to let us copy an instant or sorcery from a grave three times. Again, any of our spells that let us copy other spells. You know, you basically create an infinite loop with it, and it's fantastic. Mystic's Mastery could copy an instant or sorcery from her grave, but we're always looking to overload it, copying all of them, and winning with infinite combos. Bonus Round is going to copy each instant or sorcery that we cast. As well as, unfortunately, the the instant and sorceries that other players cast as well for the turn. Um, but, you know, we're we're heavily focused on this strat. So, you know, I don't know, someone like us to double cast a Teferi's Protection or something. We don't care. We might care a little bit, but, like, it's fine. Wildfire Devils is going to let us copy an instant or sorcery from our opponent's grave at random. It's going to happen on ETB as well as each of our upkeeps. I don't usually like giving up this kind of control in terms of what we're copying, but, you know, for a free spell, I'll do it. One Ring Archaic is here to tax our opponents for two, and if they refuse to pay that tax, we're going to copy their instant and sorcery spells. Jenga Taxis Progress Tyrant is going to copy the first instant sorcery or artifact we play each turn, and counter the first one that an opponent plays. God Eternal Kefnet is a recordable way to create cheaper copies of spells as we draw them. A two minute discount on draw is powerful, and we still get to have the original spell in our hand to cast later. Dual Caster Mage can be flashed in to copy an instant or sorcery, and it doesn't have to be one that we control, making it a potentially sneaky counter spell. Chandra, Hub's Beacon, is another way to copy one spell per turn with the ability to generate mana offer up free spells, and deal damage built in. We have two wands left to go over, including the Wand of Wonder, which is guaranteed to hit at least one spell, but could hit two or three spells for free, leading to some big swings in our favor. Last up is Chaos Wand, which is a little baby version of Wand of Wonder. It only hits one player, but we'll do in a pinch. It's time for Counter and Control to finally enter this ring. We have a slew of counter spells and a few control spells to back them up. Let's run through this list quickly. Arcane Denial, Counter Spell, Fierce Guardianship, Fluster Storm, Is It Charm, Mana Drain, and Spell Pierce are all here to stop our opponents from casting their spells. But wait, there's more. We have Deflecting the Swat to redirect a spell, Cyclonic Rip to bounce our opponent's boards and Illusionist Gambit to redirect an entire attack. For those of you keeping track at home, we've only seen 64 cards, not including the commander, 
and the last two non-land cards didn't quite fit neatly into any of these categories. They're no less important though, and we'll start off with Balmor Battle Mage Captain, who's going to grant each of our creatures plus one plus O oh, and trample each time we cast an instant or sorcery. Granted, it's only for the turn, but again, if we're storming off, this could be a huge finisher for us. Last up, but certainly not least, is our Golden Nightmare Varen Voice of Duality. This beast is going to double up all of our triggers, including their own, allowing them to pack not just a punch, but an entire wallop. We're doubling up on tokens, we're doubling up on card draw, damage, power boosts, you name it, we're doubling it. But guys, that's the deck. Nate, I hope you really liked it. Were there cards in here that you're questioning, like, why they got put in? Were there some key cards that I missed when constructing this? Is there a custom build you would like to see in the future? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, there's a link to a full deck list in the description, as well as a link to our Discord, where you can stay ahead of the curve in terms of the content we're producing, play games of Commander with us over Spell Table, and much more. Until next time, guys, have a good one, and as always, good luck with your builds.